So good afternoon. Welcome to Barcelona. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. So I have nothing to disclose. So the diagnosis of hematological malignancies are based on laboratory data, clinical data, the symptoms of the patient, flow cytometry, immunohistochemistry, cytology, that is basic, and genetic study. The genetic study is very important in multiple myeloma uh, cases because multiple myeloma is an heterogeneous disease that there are different clinical evolution entities and the overall survival goes from less than six months to more than 10 years. The cytogenetic study in multiple myeloma has an important li limitation that is the low infiltration of tumoral cells in the bone marrow. So for this reason, we can find that when we put a cytogenetic culture, we obtain no, I, we didn't obtain uh, metaphases. There is a failure of the culture in 10, 25% of the cases. We obtain a normal karyotype in half of the cases. And we obtain an abnormal karyotype in 30, 40% of the cases, which is an indicator of the aggressiveness of the disease. So to study the multiple myeloma, it's important to select the, the cell, that, the tumoral cell, that is the plasma cell. So these cells have to be identified or selected. So how can we perform this? So we can perform a fictional assay. A fictional assay is an assay that allows us the identification by, by uh, immunoglobulins antibodies that are combined with the fish technique. So we can identify the cell, the plasma cell, and we can perform fish on that cells. The other option is to select by immunomagnetic beads the plasma cell with CD138 antibody and or select by sorter with this antibody too. So the genetic characterization, there are some conventional techniques, cytogenetics, conventional cytogenetics, the karyotype, that the problem with this technique is the low mitotic index. So only one third of the cases we have information from the culture. So for us, for this reason, we have another uh, genetic technique available. The fish is the, monos, the standard one that we can detect alteration in more than 90% of the cases, and microarrays that we can detect alteration also in all cases, more or less. And the, the, the main advantage of microarrays is that we can detect all alterations in all the genome and at low resolution level. So considering the, the genetic information of multiple myeloma, we can divide patients in two groups. So we have multiple myeloma hyperdiploid, that is around 60% of the cases, and, as, and these patients are characterized because there are trisomies of odd chromosomes. The multiple myeloma non hyperdiploid is, is characterized by the presence of translocation of IgH gene, deletions, and monosomies. It's very important the translocation of IgH genes, and it's affecting 30 40% of the cases. And we can find that IgH didn't have very heterogeneous partners, so it's frequent to find a translocation of IgH gene with cyclin genes. We can find for this with cyclin D1, that is a translocation 1114, the cyclin D2, that is a translocation 1214, and cyclin D3, that is a translocation 614. And all these translocations are considered of good prognosis translocations. But we have also bad prognosis translocations. In this case, we can find the translocation of IgH gene with FGFR3 gene. That is a translocation 414. And we can see that this patient has a bad prognosis. They respond to the treatment, but they early relapse. There are, the other translocation that is a bad prognosis translocation is a translocation between IgH gene and MA. MAF gene, that is a translocation 1416, that is a bad prognosis too. And finally, the translocation 1420 is too bad of bad prognosis as well, and it's implicated the IgA gene that is rearranged with MAFB gene. The other important alteration in multiple myeloma is the alterations uh, involving chromosome 1 alterations 
we can find 1p dilution alterations. This is a poor prognosis alteration for both 1p22 and 1p32 deletion. The other alteration that is affecting chromosome 1 is the 1q gain that is a poor prognosis alteration for both overall survival and progression free survival. And 7TP deletion is an important alteration also in multiple myeloma cases. It's an alteration that is of an adverse prognosis alteration for both overall survival and progression free survival. It's an uncommon in newly diagnosed uh, multiple myeloma patients appears during the progression of the disease. And the lack of TP53 uh, gene may promote the extramedullary disease. And TP53 mutations are not very are very rare in this, in multiple myeloma. So the cytogenetic analysis is one of the most important prognostic factors in multiple myeloma, and for this reason, it's mandatory at diagnosis to define the high risk the cytogenetic patients. So considering the cytogenetic information, we can define three categories of risk. We have patients of a standard risk that are patients with trisomies, the hyperdiploid group, we are cases with translocation 11, 14, cases with translocation 6, 14. For the intermediate risk, we have cases with translocation 4, 14. And for the high risk, the high risk cases includes cases with 17 P deletion, translocation 14, 16, and translocation 14, 20. And also those patients with high risk gene expression profiling signature that I will uh, talk about later. Last year, in a clinical cancer research journal, appeared a new, a new study that is very important because they show the importance of the clone size detected by fish. They study more than 300 patients, newly diagnosed patients, and 92 relapsed multiple myeloma cases. They observed that there was the IGH-related re uh, rearrangements were observed in the majority of purified plasma cells. Also, the deletion, the 30Q deletion, the 70P deletion, 1Q21 amplification were present in different percentages. So considering this information, they established an optimal cutoff with prognostic value. So this cutoff were 10% for 13Q deletion, 50% for 70P deletion, and 20% for 1Q21 amplification. There is a strong association among adverse lesions. So just to remind that adverse fish alterations are translocation 414, 1416, 1420, 1Q gain, and 17P deletion. So we can observe here that there is a strong association between these, uh, these alterations. And we can see with a study that was published last year in Blood Journal, they study a subset of patients with hyperdiploidy, and they observe that there is a strong association of adverse lesion also in this subset of patients. This is a strong association is important because it it's also has an impact on the overall survival and progression-free survival. So this study showed that the triple combination of a adverse IGH translocation, gain of 1Q, and deletion of 17P was associated with a median overall survival on nine months. So here in this, in this plot, we can see the different uh, survival curves according to the number of adverse alterations. So the study that I mentioned before that was published in blood last year we can see that when we study the hyperdiploid cases with the adverse lesions, we can see that the coexistence of both kind of alteration did not alter the progression free survival or the overall survival. The bortezomib regimens have been shown that can improve but not overcome the outcome of these high risk cytogenetics patients. So cytogenetics is very important. So there is a, re a recommendation for risk stratification. So I will focus on the recommendations on genetics. So the recommendations that were published in 2011 in Blood Journal, they say that it's mandatory to apply fish on plasma cells with, to study translocation 414, 1416, and deletion of 17P. 
So what is the recommendation for risk stratification when we receive a multiple myeloma case in our lab? So first of all, we have to perform the cytological study to know the plasma cell infiltration. Once we know that, we will perform FISH in all the cases. We will isolate the CD138 positive uh, cases, the plasma cells, and also we will perform the karyotype in those cases when infiltration with uh, more than 30% of plasma cells. So the fish, we will perform fish and we will apply the following probes. We will study the 17P deletion, that is a bad prognosis probe. The IGH split, that is a probe to see if there is a, any rearrangement affecting the IGH gene. And in case that IGH gene is translocated, is positive, we will study which translocation. We will study for the translocation 414 and for the translocation 1416 because are the ones of bad prognosis. Also, we can study the 1114 in case we want to know if this the, the patient has a translocation, a good prognosis translocation. So we all know that we have uh, different available techniques for genome study. We have the conventional one that is the karyotype and fish that is the ones that I have commented during the talk. We have other ones that are microarrays. Microarrays allow us to, the, to study the chromosome at a low resolution level. And finally, we can study these patients by sequencing. That is the more uh, new uh, technique. So sequencing we can study at gene level and also at nucleotide level. So considering this information about sequencing, the Multiple Myeloma Research Consortium perform an, an, an study. They study by whole genome and exome sequencing more than 200 patients, and they perform the parallel sequencing in paired samples. They study both tumoral and control samples from the same patient. So what they observed was that 65% of the cases had evidence of mutations in one or more of the 11 recurrently, recurrently mutated cases. This is the list of these genes. We can see that some of them were previously identified by other authors. And we can see that there are four genes that were involved in the pathogenesis of multiple myeloma. So the conclusions of this study were the, uh, something that we all know, that multiple myeloma are highly heterogeneous. The mutations can be clonal or subclonal, so these mutations can be an initiator or can be a potentiator of the disease. And one important thing is that we can find subclones with multiple mutations affecting the same pathway. And this is important because we can, this pathway can be a, tar a target for drug development, for the new treatments. One important thing that the sequencing studies shows is the clonal heterogeneity. So to introduce to this issue, we can see that there are three different genomes. So in multiple myeloma, we can find stable genomes that are those genomes that there is no differences between diagnosis and relapsed clones. It's characteristic of low-risk cytogenetics cases. We can find also a linear evolution so the relapsed clone apparently derives from the major subclone at diagnosis, but, acqui but is acquiring new, new lesions. And it's characteristic of high-risk cytogenetics cases. And the third one is the branching nonlinear model that is based that the relapsed clone clearly derives from a minor subclone that is barely present at low frequencies at diagnosis. So there is a clonal heterogeneity in diagnosis. And it's characteristic also of high risk cytogenetics cases. One way to study the clonal heterogeneity is to study the single, to perform the single cell genetic analysis. Single cell genetic analysis is to select different cells and to study the genes in each cell per separate. So there is a study that was performed by a group of London and was published in Blood Journal last year. And they show that the earliest myeloma initiation clones, that they have also the translocation 1114, were still present at low frequencies in, and at time of diagnosis. 
and for the first time in myeloma, they, they demonstrate the parallel evolution where two independent clones can activate the RAS MAPK uh, kinase uh, pathway through RAS mutations. So here we can see that there is a, an initial clone that have some alteration. We can observe the translocation 11, 14, and this is the second, the, the following clone that acquired new alterations, but derived into different clones that have different mutations in the same gene, RIS. So why is it important to study the intraclonal heterogeneity in multiple myeloma? It's important because, because we can treat patients in early phases. So we know that there is a clonal progression for the transmutation, transformation sorry, of high risk smoldering myeloma to multiple myeloma. So in this case, we can treat maybe with knowing the alterations that is a present, we can treat the predominant clone that is typical of multiple myeloma when it's already present in the smoldering multiple myeloma stage. So we have seen that there are, there, there are a lot of studies made uh, in a genome level, but it's important also to study the transcriptome. The transcriptome is to study is the gene expression profiling and it's a study of genes differentially expressed. So there was a different studies that have studied the multiple myeloma and have seen that there is a high risk signature for these patients. So this uh, high risk signature includes uh, 70 genes and 30% of them were mapping the chromosome one that we know that is a bad prognosis alterations affecting this chromosome. So we can see that this high risk uh, signature has an impact uh, on overall survival. And we can conclude that gene expression profile is useful for risk stratification, but has an lim important limitation that there is, a, there is no uniformity platform and there is no availab availability, so it's difficult to translate this into clinical practice. But not everything is, in, is along the genes. So we know that there is genetic abnormalities in multiple myeloma cells, but also there is an important effect of microenvironment. So one important uh, way to study this is to study the bone marrow niche in multiple myeloma. We can see there are different studies that show that there is an interaction between cells from the bone marrow and cells from the multiple myeloma. So there is an interaction of multiple myeloma cells with osteoclasts, osteoblasts, endothelial cells, and stromal cells. And in this way, these cells can secrete multiple cytokines and chemokines that lead to the tumor growth, inhibition of osteoblasts, and increased osteoclast activity. Another way to, try to communicate cell to cell is the exosomes. Exosomes is... Uh, a new field that is very uh, studied nowadays. And exosomes are small membrane vesicles that mediate cell-to-cell -cell communication, and they have multiple roles in tumorigenesis and can contribute to tumor expansion. So the bone marrow mesenchymal stromal cell derived uh, exosomes can facilitate the multiple myeloma progression and can play a drug, I can play, sorry, can play a role in the drug resistance of this disease. And finally, to sum up, we can say in terms of diagnosis that cytogenetic study made by FISH is mandatory, preferentially on selected plasma cells. There are pronostic implications of chromosome alterations, so the alterations of good prognosis are hyperdeployed karyotype, IGH translocations affecting cyclin genes, and the alterations of poor prognosis are translocation 414, 1416, 1420, chromosome 1 alterations, 1p deletion and 1q gain, and 70p deletion. In terms of research, we can see that the single cell sequencing techniques defines clonal architecture, the clonal heterogeneity that is observed in multiple myeloma. The expression techniques show high risk gene expression signatures, and the microenvironment plays a role in progression and drug resistance in multiple myeloma. Thanks for your attention, and I would like to thank especially to Norma Gutierrez and Maria Jose Calasand that they provide me some of the slides that I have presented, and my boss, Frances Sule.
Thank you very much.